It almost looks like a green screen shot from an adventure film. Those of you who struggle with heights will be troubled by the fact that it's not. But Nicola Hoyak and Philip Brueger didn't seem bothered by the altitude. They were up in the dead of night to try to set a record in the Swiss Alps, climb the north faces of three mountains, and reach the summits of Eiger, Munk, and Jungfrau in record time. That record was set in 2004. It took the previous pair of climbers 25 hours to do this, which is a long day plus an hour of an incomparably grueling feat. But earlier this month, Brueger and Hoyak were on a roll when they summited Eiger alone in less than six hours, what usually takes amateur climbers two days to do. And from there, they just kept rolling and beat the record. They shattered the record. Their time for all three summits, 15 and a half hours, almost 10 hours faster than the previous high mark. The phrase life on a distant planet is an awesome way to grab people's attention on a Friday. That subject's front and center on the world from A to Z. I'm Carl Azus. It's great to see you. No one on Earth knows for sure if there's alien life on a land far, far away. But researchers at Cambridge University say they've found the strongest signs yet that life may exist beyond our solar system. The place is a planet called K218b, which doesn't have the same ring as, say, Saturn. It's believed to be more than two and a half times the size of Earth, to orbit a star that's smaller and dimmer than our sun, and to be nowhere near our neighborhood. K218b's star is 124 light years away, with one light year measuring 5.9 trillion miles. So how did scientists come up with this? Peering through data captured by the James Webb Space Telescope, they say the planet seems to have dimethyl sulfide and dimethyl disulfide in its atmosphere. Those are gases, and they're significant because on Earth, they're produced by living organisms like bacteria. So if those gases are really present around K218b, and if the process to produce them is playing out the same way there as it plays out here, researchers say life could exist on that distant planet and many others throughout the universe. However, they are not certain. For one thing, the Cambridge team says it could take a year or two before scientists determine if they're actually observing these particular gases. For another, an astronomer who spoke to the BBC says a lot of strange things go on in the universe and that even if there's gas around K218b, that doesn't mean it was given off by living organisms. But scientists do plan to keep an eye on the planet as they search others for signs of life. Scientists recently pulled off the unthinkable using a mouse mesmerized by movies to create the first precise 3D mapping of a mammal's brain. The study, a culmination of a decade's worth of research and published in the journal Nature, focused on a tiny section of the test mouse's brain. The subject was stimulated physically and mentally by running on a treadmill while being shown movie clips. Researchers then used their own supercomputers to map the activity of the mouse's mind, resulting in an unprecedented 3D map showing the form, function, and activity of thousands of neurons and brain cells and half a billion synapses, all from a sliver of tissue representing only one five hundredth of the furry film buff's full brain. A word in knowledge. Which of these World War II related events took place on April 18th, 1942? Battle of the Bulge, Doolittle Raid, Attack on Pearl Harbor, Normandy Invasion. While it didn't cause a great deal of damage, an attack by 16 American bombers did expose vulnerability in Japan. It was known as the Doolittle Raid. The midnight ride of Paul Revere took place on this date in 1775. The American silversmith was sent to warn colonial forces that British troops were coming prior to the battles of Lexington and Concord. That warning helped the colonists win the first campaign of the American Revolutionary War. San Francisco's strongest earthquake on record struck on this date in 1906. The 7.9 magnitude tremor lasted for more than 40 seconds, destroying hundreds of city blocks and setting off fires that burned for days. An estimated 3,000 people were killed and hundreds of thousands were left homeless. And on April 18, 1949, 
Ireland became a republic. Six of Ireland's northern counties decided to remain part of the United Kingdom, and tensions between Northern Ireland and the republic simmered for decades. What day is it? It's been exactly 100 years since the International Amateur Radio Union was founded in Paris, France. That's why April 18th is International Amateur Radio Day, a time to recognize one of the earliest forms of broadcasting that still plays a valuable role today. 13-year-old Oliver Burkhart was diagnosed with leukemia when he was just nine, news that brings with it a long road of cancer treatments. But his dad had an idea to brighten that road. He asked people by way of social media to send in colorful fun patches to iron onto Oliver's denim jacket, thinking that each patch would mark a milestone in the treatment process. People answered in droves, and Oliver's jacket was covered in no time. Astronauts, Transformers, Pac-Man, each a little symbol of love from a complete stranger. I felt like it was a suit of armor because I knew people were like looking out for me. They gave me positive vibes like people, I knew people loved me and it's just a good thing to have like when you're going through such a hard time. Now in remission, Oliver and his family have expanded the idea and created a nonprofit program to patch together encouragement for other cancer patients. Now how it works is a child hears about our program, they go pick out, you know, from an online gallery of multiple patches, we sew them onto a jacket or tote, um, and what this is, is become, they become part of a community. The overall outlook for childhood cancers has improved in recent decades. Survival rates hovered near 50% in the 1970s, and today that number is over 80%, according to the National Cancer Institute. Cancer treatment is a long taxing process, especially for kids, and leukemia is one of the most common cancers in children, newborns to 14. Treatment typically takes up to three years and it has a lot of side effects. That's a long time feeling sick. And it includes a lot of time spent in a hospital isolated from the rest of the world. The goal of these patches is to remind patients that they aren't alone. We received one, um, one message from a family that said, you know, Jimmy can't wait to get his uh, to to get his first treatment on Friday because he's going to earn his gorilla patch, and the gorilla patch was his chemo patch. So there's many stories like that. Three of today's schools came from our YouTube channel. Please subscribe and leave a comment at YouTube.com/slash at the world A to Z. We're starting in London, Ontario, Canada. At Rick Hansen Public School, we're happy to see the Hawks. Hello to Miss McKendrick's class. It's great to be part of your day at Eris Clinic. Thanks to the students and teachers there for watching in Woodbury, Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. From Midway, USA, we welcome Mrs. Heskett's class. Hoxie Junior High School is online in Hoxie, Kansas. And we wrap up in the peach state of Georgia with the Golden Eagles of General Ray Davis Middle School. Mrs. Hamler's class is in Stockbridge. A bookshop in a small town of Michigan recently moved to a new location. It wasn't going far, just about a block away, so around 300 members of its tightly knit community stepped in to help. They formed a human chain that passed all 9,100 books from one store to another, and they reportedly did it in less than two hours, keeping the titles in alphabetical order. A much shorter and more efficient process than the boxing and unboxing method a moving company might have used. So they should totally book those folks again, if you know what I'm saying. The pop-up textbook by the book operation was a novel idea that was bound to be a Booker Prize-worthy success for the community's bestseller. And it's not hard to cover a happy ending for a shop going round the corner to turn a new page and begin a new chapter, even in a show that's all booked up. I'm Carl Azers for The World from A to Z, and I gotta book it, but we hope you get a really good read on a really good weekend. You mean the world to me.